30 years, 30 cases series of ERA, Academy of European Law. My name is Magdalena Kendior and I'm a senior lawyer in the European Public Law section in charge of seminars on European data protection law. In this podcast, we will discuss a landmark CGEU judgment of July 16, 2020, in case commonly known as Schrems II. This judgment is regarded as a milestone in the European Data Transfers Regulation. Code of Justice of the European Union invalidated so-called privacy shield as a legal basis for international data transfers to the US, but confirmed the validity of so-called standard contractual clauses. This judgment raised a number of important questions and had significant legal effect. I'm delighted to discuss this case today with Dr. Xavier Tracol, senior legal expert at Eurojust. Mr. Tracol, it's a great pleasure to have you with us today. And in order to set the scene, let us start with the context of the judgment. There are three aspects that I would like to underline about the uh, Shrine's two judgment. The first one is the uh, context of this judgment, which is the corpus of case law rendered by the Grand Chamber of the Court of Justice on the fundamental rights to the uh, respect for private life and the protection of personal data. This corpus includes the decisions in the cases of Digital Rights Ireland, Google Spain, Trams, 32 and Watson, Opinion 115 about the agreement on passenger name record data between the EU and Canada, Ministerio Fiscal, and more recently, Privacy International, La Quadrature du Net, Grandwire, Ligue des Droits Humains, Meta Platform Silence, SpaceNet, VD, and SR. The Grand Chamber of the Court of Justice is composed of 15 judges. They include both the President and the Vice President of the Court, as well as three Presidents of Chambers of five judges. The fact that the Grand Chamber is composed of senior judges of the court shows the importance of the Schrems II judgment. The second aspect that I would like to underline regarding the context of the Schrems II judgment is that Judge Raptor Thomas von Danswitz was also Judge Raptor in the cases of Digital Rights Ireland, Schrems, Tele2 and Watson, Ministerio Fiscal, La Quadrature du Net, Privacy International, Grandwire, Ligue des Droits Humains, as well as Opinion 115 about PNL Canada. The fact that the Grand Chamber includes a judge rapporteur with a high level of expertise in the fundamental rights to the respect for private life and the protection of personal data is very positive. The judge rapporteur, however, plays an important role in steering the positions of the Grand Chamber. Therefore, the fact that the same judge rapporteur is provided with the opportunity to influence the decisions of the Grand Chamber in all the pivotal cases on the fundamental rights to the respect for private life and the protection of personal data is problematic. Conversely, advocates general who deliver the opinions in all these cases differ. Advocate general Cruz Dialon in Digital Rights Islands, Advocate General Yas Kinen in Google Spain, Advocate General Yves Bo in Trans. Advocate General Sel Mengsuo E in Tele2 and Watson, Ministerio Fiscal, as well as in Trans2. Advocate General uh, Mengozzi in Opinion 115. Advocate General Campos Sanchez Bordona in La Quadrature du Net, Privacy International, Grandwire, SpaceNet, VDNSA. Advocate General Pete Frutzella in Ligue des Droits Humains. And Advocate General Jean Richard de Latour in Meta Platform Silence. Advocates General also play a crucial role in steering the decisions rendered by the Grand Chamber. It is rather difficult to understand the reason why a variety of Advocates General have delivered opinion in these cases, although the Judge Rapporteur of the Grand Chamber has remained identical. This lack of diversity is regrettable. However, Judge Rossi and Judge Sui Rev were Rapporteurs in the three recent cases of Meta Platform Silence, SpaceNet, and VDNSR. So it is to be hoped that a bigger variety of judge rapporteurs will have a say in future cases which deal with the fundamental rights to the respect for private life and the protection of personal data. 
The third aspect regarding the context of the trans two judgments that I would like to underline is that these trans two judgments implies that there was a trans judgment before. In the Schrems judgments, the Grand Chamber ruled that the adequacy decision of the Commission on the safe harbor was invalid. The background of the case originates from complaints lodged by Max Schrems as an EU Facebook user with the Irish Data Protection Commissioner. So now, coming back to the Schrems to judgment, which we are discussing today, what was the procedural background of this case? Max Schrems filed a reformulated complaint with the Irish Data Protection Commissioner. In his reformulated complaint, Max Schrems requested the invalidation of the Commission adequacy decision on the privacy shield. This decision replaced the adequacy decision of the Commission on the safe harbor that the Grand Chamber had already invalidated. The litigation ended up before the High Court of Ireland. Before these courts, the Irish Data Protection Commissioner requested a preliminary ruling of the Court of Justice. The High Court of Ireland granted this request. The context of the Schrems II judgment is therefore the dialogue between domestic judges and judges of the Court of Justice through a request for a preliminary ruling. The same mechanism has also been applied in all the other cases which deal with the fundamental rights to the respect for private life and the protection of personal data. Now, regarding the procedure, the uh, European Data Protection Board, which is composed of the data protection authorities of the 27 member states, made verbal submissions before the Court of Justice for the first time. The uh, European Data Protection Supervisor has, however, not been heard in this case. And now, comparing the two Schrems judgment, Schrems 1 and Schrems 2, would you say that the Grand Chamber adopted the same approach in the two Schrems cases? No, the Grand Chamber adopted different approaches in the two Schrems judgments. In his opinion, in the first Schrems case, Advocate General Yves Bo assessed the legitimacy of US surveillance and harshly criticized the safe harbor scheme. In the first Schrems judgments, the Grand Chamber, however, moved the focus from the assessments of the uh, legitimacy of US surveillance, in the opinion of Advocate General Yves Bo, to the analysis of the compliance by the safe harbor decision with the uh, then applicable directive read in light of the charter. The Grand Chamber ruled that the safe harbor decision was invalid since it failed to comply with the uh, requirements laid down in the then applicable directive read in light of the charter. The Grand Chamber did not assess the US legal system, including the national intelligence activities, and examine neither the US surveillance programs nor the legal basis of these programs. Importantly, the Grand Chamber did not find that the US lacked the protections required by applicable EU law either. However, the Privacy Shield decision provides much more detail about US law on national security and surveillance than the safe harbor decision. So in the Schrems II case, Advocate General Sao Mensgo E and the Grand Chamber both examined US surveillance law against applicable EU standards. The Grand Chamber found that the US lacked the protections required by applicable EU law. It therefore moved away from its own technical legal analysis in the first Schrems judgment to consider the legal order of the US in practice in the Schrems II judgment. As we know, Grand Chamber invalidated the decision of the Commission on the Privacy Shield in the Schrems II judgment. What are the legal effects of this judicial invalidation? Regarding the temporal effects, the invalidation of the Privacy Shield decision by the Grand Chamber is retroactive. The finding of invalidity takes effect ex tung. What do I mean by that? I mean that the finding of invalidity takes effect from the date when the decision of the Commission entered into force. This situation implies that the Privacy Shield decision has never been legally valid. All transfers of personal data from the EU to the US pursuant to the adequacy decision of the Commission without any other legal basis have consequently been illegal since 2016. 
In addition, a preliminary ruling of the Court of Justice, which invalidates an EU Act, such as the Privacy Shield decision, legally binds all the institutions of the EU and domestic courts of all member states. The effects of the judgment are thus ergonomous. Regarding the substantial effects, the Grand Chamber invalidated the Privacy Shield decision without maintaining its effect. As the Shrine's judgment, which invalidated the Safe Harbor decision, the Shrine's two judgments has also created a lot of legal uncertainty. As a result of the Shrine's two judgments, thousands of private companies which relied on the Privacy Shield needed to urgently examine the situation and identify alternative legal basis if they wanted to continue transferring data from the EU to the US. Talking about legal basis for international data transfers, may private companies continue relying now on appropriate safeguards to transfer personal data to third countries? The proper safeguards include two relevant rules, standard contractual clauses and binding corporate rules. Regarding standard contractual clauses, private companies may only use them if the domestic law of the destination country includes acceptable limits on surveillance. This is not the case of the US. In light of the finding of the Grand Chamber, that US law does not ensure an essentially equivalent level of data protection. The Grand Chamber primarily based the invalidation of the Privacy Shield decision on the fact that the limitations on the protection of personal data arising from US law on both the access and the use by US public authorities of this data transferred from the EU to the US are not subscribed in a way which satisfies requirements that are essentially equivalent to those required by the Charter. Therefore, the reasoning of the Grand Chamber in the Trump's two judgments equally applies to standard contractual clauses. As for binding corporate rules, which, as we know, constitute another legal tool for international data transfers, may private companies continue relying on binding corporate rules to transfer personal data from the EU to the US then? The Grand Chamber did not consider binding corporate rules in the Schrems II judgment. The Grand Chamber also invalidated the Privacy Shield decision because of the degree of interference created by US law with the fundamental rights of data subjects whose personal data are transferred there. In addition, the Privacy Shield was also designed to bring guarantees to personal data transfers with other tools, such as binding corporate rules. Therefore, the Trans 2 judgments also apply to binding corporate rules, since US law has primacy over this tool. This situation implies that private companies which rely on binding corporate rules to transfer personal data outside of the EU must also assess the law of the destination country to determine whether the guarantees provided by binding corporate rules can be complied with in practice. Binding corporate rules do not present any advantage from standard contractual clauses for private companies from this particular perspective. Let us now discuss the role of supervisory authorities. What's the role of data protection authorities in the process of transferring personal data from the EU to third countries? The Grand Chamber considered that data protection authorities have a key role to play when enforcing the general data protection regulation and when issuing further decisions on transfer to third states. Data protection authorities have to verify whether each individual data processing activity meets the requirements set out by the Grand Chamber in the Shrimps 2 judgments, specifically the level of data protection in the recipient state. Data protection authorities have the task of suspending or prohibiting transfers of personal data legally based on standard contractual clauses if the requirements are not met. For instance, the Austrian, French, Italian, and Danish data protection authorities all issued decisions this year on the use by domestic organizations of the web analytics service provided by Google. In all these four decisions, data protection authorities stated that internal sites using Google Analytics 
without the necessary profit safeguards, in addition to the settings provided by Google, violate the provisions of the General Data Protection Regulation. The Data Protection Authorities found that supplementary measures taken by Google to safeguard the transfers from the EU to the US were lacking since they are not sufficiently effective to exclude the possibility of access by US intelligence services to personal data. Therefore, Google Analytics illegally transfers personal data from the EU to the US. A working group of the European Data Protection Board has dealt with these four cases. Therefore, the decisions represent a common European position among the data protection authorities. Now, looking into the future, what do you think about the negotiations between the EU and the US about a new legal framework which would replace the judicially invalidated privacy shield for transfer personal data across the Atlantic? The two shrines judgments both show the need for the US to amend its domestic law on surveillance and judicial protection. In April, the EU-US data privacy net framework has been announced. In the context of its negotiation with the Commission, the US government has amended its domestic law on surveillance and judicial protection. On the 7th of October, the President of the US signed an executive order which significantly amends the US legal framework on privacy. The order provides a legal basis for U.S. companies to transfer personal data from the U.S. to the EU. The adequacy decision of the Commission is expected to be ready in November. The European Data Protection Board will issue an opinion which is not legally binding. The 27 member states will vote to approve the adequacy decision in March. The Commission will then formally adopt it. Max Schrems has already stated that he would challenge any new adequacy decision of the Commission before the Court of Justice. The Court of Justice will therefore have the opportunity to render a framed prejudgment about the new adequacy decision of the Commission, which will be based on the executive order of the US President. 